So what I've got in this book is the great southern-born poet, novelist, essayist, and Robert Penn Warren, the only American ever to win the Pulitzer Prize in both poetry and fiction, who lived the last 40-some years of his life in the North at, at Northern Universities, namely at Yale, who never ever could get the Civil War out of his own bones and his own imagination, having gained it first at the feet of his grandfather, telling him stories near Guthrie, Kentucky. His grandfather had been a cavalry veteran of Nathan Bedford Forrest's army in the Civil War on the Confederate side. And I've got Edmund Wilson, a New Jersey-born, uh, prep school, Princeton-educated, most sophisticated literary critic of the 20th century, but who had Southern ancestors and Southern family and a lot, of, actually a lot of Southern sympathy in his own imagination, and who had a fiercely, bitterly anti-war vision uh, of history. He hated war. He, he thought it was simply man's most absurd activity, and yet he was hopelessly fascinated with it, which we can say of many writers. And he wrote this greatest of all, and in some ways strangest of all, literary histories of the Civil War. And I've got Baldwin, who, you know, is the great essayist of the Civil Rights era, which was always in conflict with the centennial. In fact, that's in many ways, what this book is trying to do which is, tr is to show how the Civil War and civil rights came into this collision in the 50s and 60s, and ultimately how they really became kind of like planets orbiting separate suns. The, the, you know, you had the, the, these two phenomena so deeply related, and yet Americans at the time could never fit them together. And there was Baldwin at the heart of that, just thumping away, pounding his drum, telling the country, if you don't understand the necessity of bringing about full civil rights, uh, then you, don't, you will never understand what the Civil War was even about. And then ultimately, Bruce Catton. Uh, in, in Baldwin, by the way, a northern-born, New York, Harlem-born, uh, uh, at the time, he would have been called a Northern Negro, uh, uh, a Yankee in that sense, who never set foot in the Jim Crow South until he was 33 years old. And then Bruce Catton, who was born in Michigan in a small town, uh, uh, deeply imbued in his youth around the turn of the 20th century with, with watching the old Civil War veterans on Memorial Day, uh, who ends up in his... 50s, 60s, and 70s, writing the most popular narrative of the Civil War that we've ever had. And so what I'm trying to do with these four writers, three of them from a very literary background, one from a journalistic narrative history background, all of whom gained very, very large reading audiences, I'm trying to read through them and they were some of our most serious and sophisticated writers, I'm trying to read through them how Americans were processing the meaning of the Civil War broadly defined and its aftermath, its legacies, at the time of the 100th anniversary as then a way of reflecting ahead, so where are we now? And much, much has changed in the 50 years since the 60s about certainly much has changed in academic interpretation, in historical interpretation of the Civil War. Uh, we know so much more uh, about the causes, the character, and the consequences of the Civil War now than we did 50 years ago. But the essential issues in the public memory are roughly still the same. We're still asking, was the war really about slavery? We're still asking questions about why and how the war was fought. We're still asking questions about why and how the North won and the Confederacy lost. And we're still asking many questions about the problems of the vexing legacies of the Civil War every time we confront the question of race, every time we confront the question of federalism, the relationship of states to the federal government.